rates. The Fed is expected to cut interest rates next week. But by how much? Recent data from overseas adds weight to the argument that could, that cut could be as high as 50 basis points. Joining us now for more on this is Sam Dunlap, who is Angel Oak Capital Senior Portfolio Manager. Thank you for being here on The Move. Got to ask you real quick. At first, people said 50 basis points would be out of the ballpark, not really needing to go there. But we've had very prominent um, guests similar to you who say, yeah, no, we actually could go there because of what they're watching overseas. And that the Fed has this feeling they need to be the protector of the global economy. Do you agree with them? Yeah. We generally think that, that you know, 50 basis points is probably too aggressive at, at this month's meeting. Uh, you know, in 75 for the balance of the year, we also think is what market participants are currently pricing in is probably too aggressive for, for this year as well. We think 25 basis points is probably more realistic at, at this month's meeting. Uh, and we think that, you know, broadly, the, the, the general concerns from the growth data, uh, while it is slowing, the current data in the U.S. in particular is, is rather solid. And we just generally view that the growth data is slowing, but it's just not plunging. And uh, the Fed is certainly aware of, of some of that slowing manufacturing data, but it's more tariff related, in our opinion, is what's giving the Fed a, a lot of pause, particularly on the recent global growth data. Um, I know in particular when you're looking at data here in the U.S., you're focused on the housing market. We got existing home sales yesterday that were below estimates. Today, new home sales beat estimates, but there was a revision lower uh, for the past several months. What does the overall picture look like to you? Yeah, so really it's kind of a, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a mixed picture there. Uh, the, the existing home sales, as you pointed out, thinking about it on a year-over-year -year basis, down 2.2% year-over-year. New home sales year over year up four and a half percent. I think just further supporting the recent slowdown has been more of attributable to some of the affordability concerns uh, that have been weighing on some of the recent housing data. Uh, you know, the home prices have been rising throughout the post crisis period. Uh, you know, in the early days of the post crisis period, up five to 10 percent year over year. Uh, home prices, though, the good news is they've been slowing down recently on a year over year basis and are coming more in line with wages, uh, you know, approximately three and a half percent year over year, if you think about Case Shiller broadly. Uh, so that, that's a factor that we think supportive for, for longer term stability in the housing market. Also just weighing on affordability most recently has just been rising mortgage rates on the heels of the Trump election. But as we know on the recent Powell pivot, uh, particularly at the beginning of this year, mortgage rates have plunged to the tune of approximately 100 basis points uh, since the highs that we saw in November of 2018. So, uh, you know, two of the factors weighing on affordability and perhaps weighing on the housing data being uh, rising home prices and rising mortgage rates have come down a bit. Uh, and we think that the plunging mortgage rates really matter. Uh, also, if you think about the mix of existing and new home sales, uh, you know, the home builders are really shifting their product mix towards more of that affordable product, which is where a lot of the demand is coming from, from a housing perspective, is the millennials continue to be very supportive from a demand perspective in the housing market. Uh, they continue to form households at an annualized pace of approximately one and a half million, while supply is still pretty constrained. So the, the longer term fundamentals from a housing perspective are really strong. And as you pointed out, we focus a lot on housing, just given our bias towards mortgage credit particularly residential mortgage credit right now in the U.S., which is pristine and uh, look, looks very bright, as, as the, especially as the Fed is approaching a mid-cycle easing campaign. Hi, Sam. Emily here. So I just want to ask, at the Fed's upcoming meeting, assuming they go through with these interest rate cuts, how much support do you see that actually providing the domestic economy and the stock market in an environment where we already have relatively low interest rates and it seems like the markets have already done some of the Fed's work for them and have lifted in the weeks leading up to this meeting? Yeah, we think the mid-cycle easing is, is what market participants are calling it. We would agree with that. Uh, it's going to be, you know, I would say very similar to, to the mid-90s mid-cycle easing campaigns that we saw. We think it's very supportive for risk assets. I mean, it's just you can see it in, in, the, in, the, in the actual performance this year. I mean, right. uh, as, you, as your, your previous uh, uh, speaker was highlighting, you know, we're approaching uh, all-time highs on the NASDAQ. The S&P is up 20%. Year to date, uh, the credit markets have, have been uh, performing we'll extremely yeah. well. Yeah, high we, yield up over 10 percent. That's so right. Very. Yeah, we got to keep an eye on all of this. But uh, Sam, got to say thank you, Sam Dunlop, Angel Oak Capital Senior Portfolio Manager. All the best to you.